you watching CNN? No, nah, my ears. I was listening to uh, listen to some YouTube. Oh, I just, I just, I just got, I just heard a funny story, man. You almost shit yourself. When? <laughs> Suppose you almost shit yourself when you thought you lost your watch or you couldn't find your watch. Oh shit! <laughs> <laughs> I was white as a ghost, bro. I was like, I was. Yeah, that's exactly how 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 uh, Kyle explained to me that you looked. He said all that black was gone. <laughs> I, was, <laughs> I was so fucked up. You, oh didn't, you didn't know it was at the hotel. You gotta know where you leave your watch. I I did know. I realized it where it was, but I didn't trust that the lady was gonna be like, "Oh, I found it." Or what do you like, mean found it? It's in your room, right? Yeah. So who's gonna find it in your room? The maid. Oh, you think she's gonna? Are oh, you was worried that she's gonna steal it? Because when I went to Mexico one time, I left the I left there. I left my room, came back. My I, my iPad was gone, huh. and they're saying, "Oh, no one was in there." Blah blah blah. I said, I said I went to the front desk and threatened them like, if my if my shit don't be back in that room by the time I, I get back, back at the end of the day, it better be in my room. Yeah, I was. I think, like, I oh, think, we found it. Oh, we found it. I think Frank is. Do you you know Frank? You ever spoke to Frank? Frank. Frank Zane. Oh yeah. All right, cool. Cause I haven't. He, I think he's here. Oops. <laughs> <laughs> I, I was like, oh, Frank. <laughs> I'm like, hey, Frank, how are you? I, I'm <laughs> I said, I said, I knew Frank looked good, but I didn't know he looked that good. <laughs> I'm the technical person. We had technical I was like, we had technical problems with the laptop today. Oh uh, yeah, it's, it's so really, I have to start a whole new thing. Here's it's, Frank. It's working great right now. Frank, <laughs> thank you, thank you so much for helping out. Ready to go. How you doing, I'm Frank? Doing well. I'm finding you. I'm doing awesome. Let me say this first. I am so excited to have you as a real legend of the oh, sport of you. bodybuilding finally on our podcast, especially the old school round table. Finally. So, That's a great picture of you up there in the corner. Thank you. Thank you. Right <laughs> so, How's it going, Frank? I'm fine. Thanks. You remember me? I, you know, the, the camera's sort of in the way, so I can't Chris, see your face. Chris Cormier, I, was, I grew up in Palm Springs, uh, seeing you at the post office and everything on occasion, right there by Zane Avon. What's your name again? Chris Cormier. Oh, Chris, yeah. I, <laughs> I remember you. Yeah. So, F Frank, are you originally from Palm Springs? Well, actually, I'm originally from Pennsylvania. Oh, okay. Florida, and then uh, Santa Monica. And then Palm Springs, and now uh, San Diego. Oh, okay, okay. So, yeah, so you so, might meet them, huh? I'm down here in San Diego too now, Frank. You live in San Diego? Yeah, I'm in uh, El Cajon. All oh, right, I'm in La Mesa. Okay, yeah, same place. Pretty like, close. Uh, five, ten minutes. I just, I just talked to Kyle. She said she, she went to San Diego for the first time in her life, and I asked her, "Is it expensive over there?" Because I thought. San Diego is crazy expensive. She said it wasn't really that expensive compared to Arizona. Is that true? I guess it's about the same. It's not terribly expensive. So why is everybody saying that California and you know people can't live in, in California anymore? I don't, I don't know. Is that is that prob is that just because of the taxes, maybe? I really don't know. I've been here a while, so it's all the same to me. Yeah. I think uh, LA has been like run, you know, got a lot of crime up there and it's a lot of uh a lot of different things that's not too pleasant like, as it was back in you know years past milos can you hear us yes i mean uh, you guys are early it's 11 o'clock <laughs> uh, hi yeah, frank but listen listen Hello. listen i saw that frank was coming on and i can't let him wait that's not happening oh okay i had to, I had to immediately let him in yeah. Frank, just for you to know, they always let me wait until 11.00, so. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Great to see you, Frank. Thank you for Thank coming. You. Thank you. Yeah, Frank, I, I want to point out one thing right now that I didn't know, 
and I, I, I did a little bit of research and, and found out that you are one of three only bodybuilders that ever beat to beat Arnold Schwarzenegger. I think that's true. Yeah, it was you, actually, and I, I have the name written down somewhere. Chester Yorton and then Sergio Oliva. You three were the only guys to ever beat Arnold Schwarzenegger. Right. I think I was the last one to beat him, too. Yeah. Well, you, 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 Frank, you did 1968 at the Universe, and then he lost to Oliva 69. So you beat oh, really? him. Before. Yes. All right, close enough. Close enough. Yeah. <laughs> wow. That's amazing. Uh, yeah, Frank. So, what? How did you? Um, how did you ever come about? You want to be a bodybuilder, and you you wasn't the biggest guy on the block. And how did you have the the confidence in trying to accomplish something like that? Well, it's just something that I found myself doing at age fourteen. You know, I lived in a tough section of town, and uh, fights were prevalent. I had a younger brother who liked to mouth off to the tough guys, and I would end up finishing the, the argument. And so uh, I started working out, and, and the results were evident. And then I looked like I worked out, so nobody nobody bothered with me after that. Nice, nice. Same. <laughs> For me, that's also interesting because we knew who to follow. But you were like pioneer. You were one of those you know pioneers that started with the, with the in the 60s and then 70s. I mean, it's easy for us. I've seen your pictures, and I idolize you. By the way, my mother said, please say hello to Frank Zen. She took a picture with you in uh, Florida, 1993. Oh. And she watched your poster on my, in my, my room forever. Uh, and uh, she loved your physique, by the way. You know how the normal people would always like aesthetic, you know, the, the physiques like, like uh, Frank. Frank was perfect. But you are the one that started this whole thing. I know that you uh, made me want to be a, like you, bodybuilder, like you. I was not really looking to have a Arnold Schwarzenegger or Sergio Oliva's mass. So you were so much more appealing for uh, average people. And I'm sure one of it. You are, you are my all-time idol. Well, my idol was Steve Reeves. Yeah, yeah, that's Steve Reeves. Reeves. You no, know, he was my all-time favorite. And next was Larry Scott. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Did Did you uh, have Did you um, uh, like Did you model Did you want to work out like them Did you try to look after their programs and see if you can emulate uh, something they were doing uh, Not so much I mean I saw what Reeves did and I had my own routine It was wasn't that different I, what... I basically followed a three way split routine which I'm still doing Oh uh. Frank, where did the information back then, where did you get the information from of how to train, what to do, how to diet for a show? Because oh. now, nowadays people have coaches and they rely on what the coaches tell them to do. Back then, I don't think it was like that. So where did you was, get, where did you get gonna, all your info from? I was going to ask about Arthur Jones and did he work with Arthur Jones? I never worked with him. No. Wow. I didn't believe in that system anyway. You know, I always... <laughs> always uh, knew that I needed to do multiple sets. Okay. And so the way I trained was in the tradition of Reg Park and Bill Pearl and, you know, all the, the, the greats that were that generation before me. What what type of training was that? Well, the three-way split routine, like uh, pulling muscles day one, legs day two, pushing muscles day three, rest day four. That's the sequence I normally followed. Training three days out of four, resting the fourth. And typical four or five exercises, four or five sets? Not that many. Maybe uh, three or four exercises, uh, you know, three or four sets of each one. Yeah, see, this is what I followed. Yeah. yeah. Three, four yeah, exercises. Yeah, it's not, nothing new, nothing new. Yeah. But could because when you look, because we talked to so a lot of guys from back in the days, and they all... Most of them usually train, I don't know, 15, 20, 30 sets. They've been in the gym for three, four hours. So you weren't like that. No, my workouts generally took about an hour and a half. Yeah. And I didn't waste time in there. You know, I went right from one one thing to the next. Yeah. Generally trained by myself. Sometimes I had a partner. 
Mm. But generally, I trained on my own. And and you still train to this day? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Oh, wow. I have my own gym. It's uh, you know the lower story of of where we live, and it's six hundred square foot uh, gym with everything in it. Huh. And uh, it, it's it's a great setup. Is that the same thing you had in uh, Palm Springs at the Zane Haven? Is it the same type of concept? Same equipment. It's a little smaller, but it's the same stuff. Okay. Yeah. So uh, if I may ask, because uh, you are known, you know, for that crazy conditioning, super thin skin, zero body fat. I mean, uh, uh, even now, people are mentioning, I, I have some arguments with Samir Banu <laughs> lately, and he was like, but look, nobody's going to repeat Frank Zane's condition. And uh, you are first one to get it. How did you get it? How did you know to cut the carbs all the way down? I mean, like Dennis asked, first, how did you know information about training? How did you have information about contest prep? Because nobody was as ripped as you back in the day. I experimented, and then what worked, I kept doing. It was as simple as that. And then I, I got information from certain people. Like I, I trained with. I was in South Africa for two weeks training with Reg Park. I learned a lot from that. You know, I, I, I trained a little with Bill Pearl, trained a lot with Arnold. So you know, I've basically been working out with everybody my whole life. Did you travel just to train with him in South Africa? Well, I was there for, for two weeks doing exhibitions. Okay. We generally did exhibitions together. Nice. I really liked Reg. He was a great guy. Yes. Uh, I have to say that story. I was 2006 in uh, Johannesburg, and I called him, and I wanted to come see him. And he says, Milos, I really appreciate it, but I don't want you to see me. Because he was already at that stage that uh, he didn't look good, didn't feel good. That was devastating for me, and shortly after, he, he passed away. Oh. Uh, but he was uh, such a gentleman. <laughs> uh, obviously, he was uh, Arnold's uh, idol back in the day. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and I keep saying, I mean, Frank, really, if I didn't say it enough times, you were really my idol to the point that, uh, I mean, I was kind of fanatic. I know all your poses, all, all the, I mean, my walls are full of your pictures. And you set that standard for me for aesthetics. I mean, you were the first classic Olympia all the way. I mean, if you if you can think of classic physique, <laughs> you can be no better than Frank Zane uh, at mm -hmm. all times. Okay, since we talk about knowing all Frank Zane's pictures, this is a question for Chris and Milos. Mm -hmm. Let give me your favorite Frank Zane picture. Let's see. Let's see if we all agree. Yeah, uh, gotta have the vacuum. Twisted, twisted uh, uh, hips, hands up. Twisted yeah. that one, okay, Chris. The, 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 this the pose, 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 vacuum. Yes, I, I personally, I'm gonna say this uh, publicly. I hate vacuum, but uh, but uh, <laughs> uh, Frank made it perfect. Yeah, that, that's Frank that's made it like wow, and that's why people do it. But not too many people look good in the vacuum. Hmm. I mean, uh, uh, Frank looked spectacular. So my favorite is hands up. How about yours? My favorite is him in the vacuum pose, standing there, that black and white picture. That's in my head forever. Mine, mine is a vacuum pose also, but it was because I was, um, I was amazed with all the muscles that was on display in that pose. Mm -hmm. That's when I started to, you know, study the anatomy and like learn like, okay, uh, his serratus was like really developed. So I don't know if that was from a lot of, from just genetics or from pullovers or something like that, but that made me like, man, I want to try to see if I can display those type of uh, muscles when I when I hit a pose or when I vacuum. And I yeah. wanted to learn how to do the vacuum. Then I started to study all these different little things, but that, that shot right there uh, stand out the most to me is uh, the way you pull that vacuum up so hard. It was from a lot of pullovers. Pullovers. Under dumbbell pullovers lying across the bench and get a deep stretch. And I just did a lot of those. Mm. Yeah, that works. I practiced posing a lot too. Mm. Yeah. How, how much time did, did you. A lot of photos. How, Frank, how much time did you invest in practice posing? Well, you know, before contests, like the last couple of months before, I practiced every day and then I took a lot of photos. 
uh, with Artie Zeller, who mm. was the weeder photographer at the time, who was really good. And then also with my wife, who was really good, too. He's and uh, we would go out with my wife. We would go out every weekend and take photos at different outdoor uh, settings. Mm. Uh, was that getting ready for a show or that just the off season, just practice and posing? Well, getting ready for shows the last couple months, uh, at least two weeks, two months before competition. Yeah. I think I know. I, I think you retired it back in '83. Now, I, I, and that's I mean that's a long time ago. So, do you still follow? The sport of bodybuilding, do you follow the Mr. Olympia? Do you still, do you know the guys? Or do, would you recognize some of the guys nowadays? Some of them. You know, just what's on Instagram and Facebook, it's all I know. I look at that stuff. Yeah. So, and so Mike, Mike Hearn has been down here to see me a few times. Who? So I'm friends with Mike. Michael Hearn. Michael oh, Hearn. Oh, okay. But yeah, M Michael Hearn, is not, he's not a competitor, though, with the IFBB Pro League. I don't think. That no, I don't think he is. So, so when, when you, when you, when, let's compare the, uh, let's compare the Olympia lineup back in the 70s and, and, and early 80s to compare to the Olympia lineup, let's say the last 10 years. What do you see changed and, and what do you think happened? Well, nowadays I think there are more really good guys and they're bigger. Yeah. You know, I mean, I haven't really seen anybody that, has incredible symmetry and in lines and aesthetics, but there, you know, the, the field is very dense and very thickly populated. So mm. there's a lot of good guys. Yeah. So do you do you appreciate the, the the new class, the classic physique? Well, it's it's sort of a good thing they're paying attention to that, and they give Chris Bumstead a chance to win something. Mm. You know, the, the, these guys today competing. You know, there's there's the aesthetic class and then there's the monster class. And, uh, you know, it's sort of hard to beat somebody that's a lot bigger and freak, more freaky muscle than you have. Right. So I think it's a good thing. Yeah. But you did. You did. I mean, you set the standard 77, 8, 9. I mean, you were beating guys considerably bigger. So th this is how they, I think my personal opinion is IBB wanted to bring back the beauty of you and Serge Bray and some of the classic bodybuilders. And then when they did this classic body, I mean, I thought it was classic bodybuilding, but then they defined it. No, no, no. We are not looking, this is classic physique. So it's more just a structure because somebody that is a little bit bigger, it would probably be, oh, you're too big. But you could fit with your height and weight in the classic division now. You could make the cut. And uh, I, I don't think there is more perfect physique that uh, Frank Zane's of all time. So I... <laughs> Of course, you might idol, idol, but I'm sure that uh, Dennis, you and Chris would agree that's ultimate paragon of what classic man's bodybuilding look. It would be a Frank Zane. Yeah, I mean, this is what everybody thinks. I mean, if anybody talks classic, everybody thinks about Frank Zane. Frank, the, Frank Zane, Serge Nubre, um, um, Lila Brada, Francis Benfato, those are the guys, and those are all smaller guys. When you compare them to to some of the mass monsters, but yes. those are the guys that stand out when you think classic bodybuilding. Yeah, but they managed to beat. I, I mean, Lil Ada was second, yeah, right? Yeah. Mohammed Makavi beat uh, <laughs> Lee Haney. Uh, I think uh, uh, Frank, you competed with even uh, Lee Haney and Makavi and Samira all the way up to till 1983. But I wanted to ask how that worked. Because you were competing at Olympia, but then you went to NABA as well. And Arnold did the NABA, AAU, and IBB in the same year. Uh, can you explain us how was that possible? I thought it was like, you have to just be IBB. You cannot compete in any other federation. I think eventually it came down to that. But when I competed in NABA, it was at the... I think it was 70 and 72 that I won the NABA Mr. University Amateur 70 and the, the Pro in 72. And in those days, there you know, there was no division as to IFBB and NABA. I mean, we went in both. Yeah. Uh, so uh, I apologize to, to bring that back, but I ask about your diet and how did you come so ripped in, in an era that nobody was like that? Bill Pearl, you know, Larry Scott, and then Arnold Sergio. They didn't have a 
close to your condition, Lou Ferrino, anybody? So you were the first one. When you were going and you get leaner, how far to go? Can I can I get a step more? <laughs> a little bit further. I mean, you were peeled out of the mind. I mean, this is a conditioning that uh, we would all die for. Uh, how did you diet? I mean, you are specific. You say you experimented. But how did you experiment? What did you do? I followed a low-carbohydrate diet. I would get less than 50 grams of carbs a day and one gram of protein uh, per pound of body weight. So I'd be getting over 200 grams of protein a day and under 50 grams of carbs a day. And that's what I did like the last few months before competition. Wow. How are your fats? Fats, you, you know, I, I really didn't go overboard on fats, but I, I didn't deliberately restrict my fats. I just didn't eat a lot of fat. Yeah. No, I, I ate red meat, uh, but I always had lean cuts. I ate fish, you know, which has good oils. Uh, I ate poultry, so I, I really didn't get a high-fat diet either. So, so you never added any extra fats into your diet, being no. so low on carbs? Yeah. Right. It was mainly low carbohydrate diet. Wow. How about your cardio? Did you do a cardio? I did some, but I didn't do a lot. I generally did something at the end of my weight training workout, like about uh, 15, 20 minutes on the treadmill, walking fast. I hope people don't hear this too, too much because people are going to cut down their cardio thinking 20 minutes is enough. <laughs> this is probably because you probably had a very, very fast metabolism. And was probably very strict on the diet. Yes. I was strict in my metabolism. It wasn't slow, but it wasn't real fast either. Uh. You know, I, when I did what was necessary, I got in shape. But you also never really went... Overboard in off season. How much weight did you did you put on in off season compared to your contest weight? Because I didn't think it was that much. No, I generally competed. My best weight for competition was one ninety. I never went over two hundred pounds in the off season. Oh, <laughs> but I stayed in that one ninety two hundred pound range all the time. Yeah. Wow. So you dieted all year. Well, I didn't look up on it as a diet. It was the way I ate normally. Mm. So would you eat more, m way more carbs? After a contest? Because if you only go up 10 pounds, I mean, it doesn't sound like you eat a lot. I would not eat way more carbs. I never did that. Yeah. And did, did you have did you have red meat on a daily or periodically? I, I eat red meat mo almost every day. Okay. That was uh, steak, fish, and chicken. In more recent times, I don't eat much red meat now. I eat mainly fish, eggs for breakfast, fish for dinner. Hmm. But but I'm just curious. I mean, 50 grams of carbs that would put you in ketosis. That's like nothing. It's like. But I thought this is just a pre-contest diet. But then, like Danny says, in off season, we would expect maybe you you went a little bit looser, two three hundred grams of carbs. No, never that much. Yeah. Never. Milos, if he only adds ten pounds. Yeah. No. You can't be you can't be eating that many carbs because you. No. no. But this is keto for life. What what would be a high carb day like for you? Mm. One hundred and fifty grams of carbs a day, maybe as a high carb day. Is that something you would do like day prior to a couple of days before the show? No, it's something I did all the time, pretty much. It just I did it more strictly before competition, and it wasn't just a few days before; it was months before, at least eight weeks before. Hmm. And uh, for the actual stage, did you carb up a little bit or no? I did. I did. Not a lot, but a little bit. So one day or two days? One day. Usually, if the contest was uh, Saturday, I would carb up on Friday and then Saturday morning. And then Saturday. Uh, See, this is uh, super interesting. And then, uh, so this was no, no diuretics or anything like that? No. No. No, that basically... If I did, I would lose too much water if I did that. Right, right. And the other thing, I sunbathed a lot. So, you know, I'd go out and lay in the sun and sweat. And that was sort of diuretic for me. And you're preparing in Santa Monica or Palm Springs? Both. Both. Yeah. I had a place in Palm Springs. I lived in Santa Monica. So I would go there on the weekends for like three or four, you know, two or three days and get sun and come back. Oh, nice. Yeah, I, I did the same uh uh, it was hot in Palm Springs, so I grew up, I was born and raised there, 
But like I said, I used to see you at the at the post office when I was between nine and twelve years old. I'd see you all the time. I try to say something to you whenever I saw you, and uh, I'd just make up anything stupid just to try to <laughs> <have a> conversation. <laughs> you didn't know what like, Chris. Oh, I was there, you know. <laughs> Chris, you didn't know what to say. You got shy. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And so, but uh, did you ever have a relationship with Bob Birdsong? Because he was another pro uh, in, that was living in Palm Springs that I would I would see. And I try to, you know, talk to both you guys as much as possible. But did you ever any type of relationship with Bob Birdsong? Yeah, I knew him. But, oh, you, you know, him. I didn't hang out with him. I didn't know him very well. Oh, okay. He, that he lived over there. Right, 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 right. So, um, no, yeah, so... I have another question for you guys, Milos and, and Chris. Who was the closest to Frank Sane? When you look back at the physiques throughout all those years now, who would you say was the closest to Frank, to Frank Sane? I would say Lila Brada more than Francis Benfado. Lila well, Brada. Older. Hmm? What Giant you killer, maybe? Who? Uh, Denny? Maybe. No. No, yeah, not Den for me. Not for me. For you? Now for me, it's uh, Lila Brada. Lila Brada has that classic lines, you know. It's uh, but he had a more of a leaner look. He had a his. I always thought his skin was a little bit thicker than someone like Can you, Frank. I, I can't even believe that the name just slipped my mind. I just had a name in my head, and now I can't remember the name. For me, I think it was Bob Paris. That's exactly what I want to say. <laughs> <laughs> Bob sure. Paris. Bob yeah. Paris. I think was was the closest to Frank saying when it comes to not only shape, also the posing. Well, well, uh, let, let's, let's clarify this. <clears throat> Bob Paris is also one of my favorites. Oh, yeah, yeah, we go. Aste <laughs> aesthetically, <laughs> aesthetically, Bob and uh, uh, Frank Zen, there will be, I, I still oh, have first. Frank winning all time aesthetics, Bob being second, right? Mm -hmm. But when you say, who reminds me the most physique? No, no, I said, who was the closest, I, the closest closer, physique yeah, wise? Yeah. Closest physique wise, you know, when you look at oh, physique, yeah, you put okay. the Lila Brada next to Frank, they would be quite uh, similar. Mm. Uh, you know, the Bob Paris was a little bit taller, a little bit, uh, you know, uh, thicker. I love uh, uh, Bob Paris physiques by all means, you know, but uh, Lila well, Brada was even, even posing. When you look at uh, Frank's posing and Labrada's posing, I'm sure that Labrada got some moves, you know, uh, turns. Sequence of poses. I mean, that's that's what uh, Frank at the time he was way above everybody in conditioning, way above every in uh, in aesthetics and in presentation. Uh, your, your posing routines were masterful, and uh, I mean, it's pretty much facial expression. Where do you look? Fingers. Everything was dramatic. I mean, I could I could watch Frank's posing for hours and not get bored. You know, so. But yeah, Bob Paris, absolutely. Is this your your second favorite bodybuilder, uh, Frank, in a, in a, in the history of bodybuilding? Bob Paris? Oh, oh, I don't know. I don't know. Larry Scott was. I think Reeves and Larry Scott were number one and two for me. Uh, Larry Scott. Bob Paris is. He's not really on the list for me. Really? Uh, what was a. Uh... What 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 year were you like? What what age were you like looking up to these guys in, in your younger years, or as you progressed and got bigger and more developed? People always ask how I got here. I was willing to work just a little harder than everyone else every damn day. If I can have hundreds of hours back, you know I'm gonna grab them. Spending hours prepping chicken, rice, and vegetables, F that. I rely on perfect nutrition. I rely on trifecta. I'd say all through my career, but my last competition was 1983. And so, you know, by that time I was I was near my peak. And uh, I had a lot of injuries. I figured I, I, you know, I was already 41 years old, so I figured, you know, my best years were behind me. So that's when I retired and decide, decided to go into more teaching other people how to do it rather than continue to, to bang away at that myself. And are you still teaching at your house now? Or Yeah, I am. I am. Yeah. Oh, wow. 
I can come I can come over and get a get a workout with you in. Yeah. Good, good. Yeah. I'm just down the street, man. Yeah, you might want to train a couple of months first before you go there. No, it's not that hard. <laughs> <laughs> so 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 the the Munich Olympia ninety three nine eighty three was your last Olympia. Yes. What was it like? I mean, th this is a question I have. What was it like competing? Because for all of us, this era was. I mean, these names uh, they're still up here, way up here. What was it like competing with these guys and and, and especially with Arnold? Was he really the way? People portray him to be, and 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 someone like like pumping iron, or was that more like just a movie? I don't think he competed that year. <clears throat> I, I know Arnold didn't compete in '83, but I know he you did a few Olympias with Arnold. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah. Pumping iron well, was '75 Olympia, no? That was the '75. '75 uh, was his last year that he won. Uh, how about 1980? <laughs> we want to talk about 1980 because you won 77, 8, and 9. Yep. And then uh, 1980 was that controversial uh, Arnold return. Was that Sydney, Australia? Sydney, Australia, yeah. So, Sydney, yeah. What happened in 1980? Well, you know, it's hard to tell when you're competing because, you know, your viewpoint is different. But I was in really good shape. I mean, I wasn't my best ever shape, but I was, you know, defined in, in, in really good shape. Uh, I think Mensa was in really good shape for that, maybe in the best shape ever. Arnold wasn't. I think him winning that was a gift. You know, I wouldn't put him as the winner. Yeah. Yeah. So you decided to uh, not to compete in 1981. Yeah, I didn't want to compete in 81. I, basically, I was doing a lot of exhibitions and traveling, and I figured I'd take that off. And then I came back in 82. And I almost won in 82. I got second to Chris Dixon, which, you know, I was heavy that year. I was almost 200 pounds. And uh, not that I think Dickerson was that good, but, you know, he was a Bill Pearl favorite. And I think they played a lot of favoritism. You know, he trained at Bill Pearl's gym. Bill was head judge. So I didn't think that helped me any. Did you see, did you think that back in 1980 that Arnold's, relationship with the Grahams had a lot to do with that win or did you think it was just like because it was Arnold or was that was there a talk at that famous confrontational photo were you there and was that anything or was that just a photo no I don't know all I remember from that is that after the show <clears throat> Arnold went on stage and all the people were assembled waiting for somebody to say something and Arnold said to the audience this proves once and for all time that I'm the greatest bodybuilder of all time. And it was met by a resounding chorus of boos. <laughs> he got booed off the stage. And I think he was very crestfallen after that. Damn. You know, you can't be saying that. You know, what you want is other people to say that you were great. Not you saying it all the time. Right, that doesn't right. count. That right, just means right. you're an egotistical fool. Right, right. <laughs> right. You want other people to say it. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> yeah. Be humble or be humble for sure. But then again, we have a Muhammad Ali that we all loved. It was always saying that. I'm well, that was different. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, but, it's, know, yeah but it's different. Yeah, going pop you in the face. It's different. If, <laughs> it's different if you whoop ass and, yeah. you, and you don't leave it up to the judges. It's different. <laughs> you see, there's a difference there. That's something performance versus appearance. Bodybuilding, it's all about appearance. Yeah, performance posing, but that's you showing your appearance. But in sports like boxing, it's all performance, all performance. And so, you know, it's not hard to decide if you if performance is what the outcome is all about. Exactly. Good point. Uh, I mean, point. And we're I mean, you there in the room that that day. Um, is that backstage when uh, Mincer was confronting Arnold? It wasn't backstage. I think it was out oh. out in front of the stage. Okay. And uh, what was it? They're talking back and forth. And uh, Arnold said something to Mensa about his stomach hanging way out all the time. <laughs> and Mensa lunged at Arnold. <laughs> and Bill, Pearl, Bill Pearl broke it up. And I was there watching it. And I said, well, whatever. 
<laughs> this, those stories, no one knows. <laughs> you know, this. I think this is, this is gold. This is gold. Thank you, Frank, for coming on the show. <laughs> can I say? Can I ask another question? Because we we know the stories. 1980. The story is that Arnold went to uh, Mr. Olympia after filming the Conan for like 77 days. Right? He went there as a commentator, and nobody expected that he's going to come to athletes' meeting and pick the number. So that's the story that we heard. I don't know if it's true. That's you what he told me too. Yeah. I asked him beforehand. I said. Are you going to uh, Australia to compete in the Olympia? And he said, "No, I'm going there, you know, to to just you know to be there and to uh, you know do some publicity for my movies and stuff." But he didn't say he was going to compete. And then when I saw him there with his gym bag, I knew he'd lied that he was intending to compete the whole time. Anyway, <laughs> the problem with that was is he wasn't really in that great shape for it, mm. but he won anyway. Wow. So you don't think the Grams had anything to do with that? I don't know, but they probably did. <laughs> they they were promoting the show, so yeah, but was... yeah, but si, si, I, I don't know what it, you know, what it was like back in the days. But today, as a promoter, you have no control over what the judge is going to do, you know. So I don't know what it was like back in the eighties or, or 1980, if the Grams, as promoters of the Olympia, you know. <laughs> He was the best man in his wedding, so I was. <laughs> I know, I I know there was a close relationship, and I, I know other story that we don't want to talk about, but but um, I don't know if as a promoter you control the judges. I, I never heard that before. Well, you surely control the judges. Yeah, but sh- I think there was a certain amount of that happening. Yeah, was what was were the judges local judges back then? I don't think they were. I think they get judges from all over. Mm. Yeah. Well, uh, one thing to put in perspective, really, uh, I mean, I'm sure that Frank didn't start bodybuilding and then tell Joe Weider and Federation, hey, you guys should look for my type of physique, right? Mm-hmm. It just they chose this type of physique because that was bodybuilding. I mean, Frank was beating Arnold, 68, and beating Mike Menzer and Robbie Robinson and all these guys later. You know, so you molded that physique and they accepted it. So for me, it was great that Joey either recognized that somebody 190 pounds can be winning Olympia three years in a row. Yeah, but, but Minos, what do you think the average weight was back then? 210 to 20. Frank, can you agree? Probably over 200. I don't know what it was. Uh, I mean, it might the, be around 210. Yeah. Did, did guys. Uh, yeah, show- I don't know. What was Arnold's biggest? What do you, what, I heard 242, like uh, uh, 73 in uh, Munich or Germany. I whatever. think in 75, you weighed 225. <laughs> Oops. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, his legs wasn't that big. He might have. No, he no. <laughs> they were cut, but they weren't big. Right. Yeah, I, I, I don't know if the average weight was 210. I, 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 I'm not really sure because... Less? Who was the bigger guy? So it was Arnold? It was Lou Ferrino? I mean, Lou, Lou Ferrino, yeah, Sergio Oliva. So, I mean, what would we think about how, how big was Sergio? You know, Sergio wasn't that tall. He was only about 5'8", but I think he weighed about 220. Mm. And, of course, he was massive for his height. Arnold was, you know, 6'1", so his weight was spread out more. And Lou Ferrigno was like 6'4", six, 6'5", six, and he weighed like above 250, so, you know. I'm imagining that Sergio was a lot of illusion. A lot of, um, I, also, I also <laughs> found out that Sergio had the smallest waist, followed by Frank Sane, the two smallest waist in bodybuilding back then. How do you know? I re- <laughs> researched. <laughs> yeah, I don't even. I don't even know. No, I, I swear. I don't even know. F- Frank, no, Frank, I, Frank, I looked oh, you man. up. I looked you up on uh, Wikipedia, and it has it has a huge. It's story. not always right. I know okay. it's not always right. That's what I'm just saying. I'm just saying that it says that uh, Frank Zane had the second smallest waist. Uh, how, how big? How, how did it, do? it doesn't give me any any. Frank, what was your waist back then? I think I measured it once when I was real lean, and it was 27 and a half. Yeah. Jeez, crazy. 
<laughs> but it's been as big as it's been as big as like 31 and a half. So I was never into measurements that much. I never rely on them. Mm. Hardly ever took them. I went by what the photographs looked like. Yeah. Yeah. True. You know how they were saying about Steve Reeves, he had to you have to have a neck, an arm and a calf at the same you know, I was going for that. That was my, my thing. I think I think Arno still believes in that today. I right. believed in it. <laughs> yeah. Did you really? Oh yeah. I was measuring that all the time. All the time. <laughs> so what do you do? You're gonna try to increase your neck or you're trying to increase the other so My neck was big from wrestling. So yeah. I was always building my neck by standing and bridging and going back and forth. My neck was, was thick. Already, but my, I was building my calves and my biceps to try to get as close to that as possible. Did anybody see the uh, the Pittsburgh uh, Pittsburgh show this past weekend? Christian, I know you were there. I don't know, yeah. Frank, if you followed it. There was uh, Jim Mannion's Pittsburgh Pro, and he, um, he always, every year, he brings the top guys at the Olympia out to guest posts. And we had, what was it, like six or seven guys? Yeah. Chris, anyway. you were Something there. Like yeah. yeah. <laughs> did anybody, anybody, Frank, did you see any of that, them guest posing? These guys? No, no. <laughs> yeah, it was, it was kind of like they brought them out individually in, uh, by ranks, so to speak, which means whoever was the highest ranked guy came out last. And then at the end, they brought them all out together and kind of did like the mandatory poses, just like as a, you know, Olympia preview six months out. So um, I, it's too bad you didn't see that because I wanted to talk about this real quick. And uh, I wanted to know, Milos, you watched it? Yeah, just a video. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, me too, just a video. So who impressed you the most out of all the guys, to be honest? <laughs> I know Milos well, is biased, but I want him to be honest. I'm biased, Coach. Uh, listen, considering that uh, Samson had really off, 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 uh, uh, Vacation time, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Not to mention everything. I think he, he looked tremendous. And he is right now in the you know, just first, second week of growing phase. And he was that big. So for me, I, I'm very happy with it. Last year, Derek Lansford shocked me. And this year, he was just as good. I mean, uh, you know, actually, maybe last year, there are some comparison pictures now. I, I saw them. Yeah, he looked better last year for me. <laughs> I listen. I, I I almost agree with you, because mm -hmm. I, I saw the comparison too, where somebody put the pictures right next to each other in all poses, and it was, it, it was darker this year. He used Pro Ten, which he probably didn't do last year, so it's hard to say. But on the video, he impressed me. Yeah. If we compare all the guys next to him, who who impressed you the most, Chris? Next to him? No, it, all all guys next to each other. I mean, Labrada is leaning I mean, because he's. Competing. I mean, what what drew my eyes? Like I was there standing next to you the last year, Dennis. So no, I'm talking about this year. I know. I'm going to get to that. <laughs> I, said, I said I was standing there next to you last year, Dennis, <laughs> and we both looked at each other when you know when uh, when Derek yeah. came out. But it was it was that same. That it was it wasn't exactly that same because you were expecting him to look a certain way. But his attributes were a little more improved, I, I thought, and he was a little bit more. Um, he was he had a nice, lean look for this particular time of the year, and um, uh, you got to say Nick Walker was dramatically different or better. It looked like he took it more serious uh, leading into this show. Not not that he wasn't. I'm sure he was off. I'm sure a lot of these guys were off of uh, their programs, but. He uh, his waist was a lot more dramatically smaller, and I remember when he was walking back and forth, he was uh, I was looking at all the different attributes he had and didn't have, and I thought he looked you know tons better and leaner this year. Um, and then you know, okay, Santa so but you're not answering the question though. Well, <laughs> I think I think um, I mean I was most most impressed by, and the and the crowd gave the biggest. No, 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 Chris, Chris, Chris. No, I'm not asking the crowd. I'm just saying. I'm asking you. I was with the crowd. I'm I'm part of the crowd. <laughs> and I was just like, you know, when Derek came out and did the crucifixion first and then to the front, I mean, no one had that most dramatic look. 
And then I would say uh, Nick was right there, and I say you know Samson right there also. Uh, okay, so would you give it to Derek, Nick, or Samson? Derek. Okay, Milos. Derek's back was way better than everybody's up there in the back double. Yeah, I mean, listen, right now Derek would be winning right now. Okay, I think see front double, back double. Uh, you know, Derek is super hard to beat, and. Uh, uh, back lot spread, Derek is super hard to beat. I don't care who is next to him, right? Mm -hmm. So those are the poses that, that uh, Samson's going to be losing. But I think that Samson can catch up in many other just overall size, shape, thickness, roundness, completeness, you know, uh, even detail and hardness. I mean, this is what we know that Derek is missing right now, the hardness to the chest, shoulders, arms, abs. You know, there's two different kind of conditioning, back and front. You know, his legs actually look great. I mean, we were talking about, I always joke with him, he looks like he's riding the horse. You know, there's no need for trying to make your legs look bigger when they're this big. I mean, his his legs look huge on the stage. You were there, uh, Chris. I mean, the picture's just like, or video. It looks crazy, you know. So, listen, Derek was second, got the first place from few judges. So his first favorite to challenge champ but uh you know i believe that samsung can uh, can squeak in he's just starting his prep yeah and motivated but uh yeah let's go you know back to france yeah. you know right uh, <laughs> <I> sat down <laughs> yeah you good frank oh sorry i nodded off for a while there <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's what you're talking about yeah, yeah, we're just talking about the Pittsburgh Pro. Whoever. Yeah. I don't know. I've never seen these guys in person. And it makes a difference what they look like in photos and what they look like in person. So I reserve judgment. Right. Right. I, I want to come here and get a workout with you, though, Frank. That's, that's, that's awesome. You just ride down the street. Yeah. I but want to put a lot of. Adjust the camera so we can see you. You know, like, you got to stand up. Yeah. Oh. He's sitting down there. I, I think I'd adjust the camera down a little bit, Frank. Is oh, let me get up. Here I am. Are yeah. oh, your wife around? No, she went downstairs. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Yeah. I'm gonna say, yeah. I, I, I'm always curious. I, I don't know, guys, if you guys follow. Back in the day, there was lightweight and heavyweight Olympia, and then they would choose the overall. But I don't know if you're aware of. So when you look at the score sheets, there is a, a lightweight, and then. A, a, in order and then heavyweight but then they have an overall and they mix them you know so the you know lightweight first and then uh, heavyweight second and third i mean they would have like two complete different judging i mean i encourage you uh dennis and, and uh, chris if you go on muscle memory and analyze those score sheets i mean i don't i don't get it so for example frank was first and uh um it, it could be uh um uh, let's say Franco Colombo second, right in the lightweight, but then Franco would be third or fourth in the, in the overall. They mix and match. It's like almost that they're judging twice. It, how was that, Frank? I mean, uh, uh, you competed and you won lightweight and the overall, uh, but then uh, you lost also. I have no idea, and I, you know the whole thing about it. All this is very subjective. The judge judges, they look at, at the, who's up there and they say, who would I like to look like? It's totally subjective. It's not really based on any kind of reality. And so I don't put any stock in it. I'm just glad that I was able to win what I did when it was. As far as what's going on now, I'm divorced from that. I don't really have any kind of opinion on it. Mm. But, but that was a good definition. First time I hear it. Judges, look, who would I want to look like? Yeah. I think that every man on, on on the planet would like to look like Frank at his best, <laughs> you know. So no, that, I don't think everybody would. Uh, vast majority, I think. You know, you you would be accepted. Bodybuilders are scrutinized with too much freaky muscle mass, right? Did you, I mean, did you get a lot of uh, a lot of uh, negative feedback, Frank, from not being like the biggest guy, but beating guys that was obviously a little bit. Uh, had more size than you? You know, if I do, I don't see it. 
No, uh, I don't really follow social media that closely. I mean, from back, back, uh, back when you were competing. No, not really, not really. Uh, yeah, because I was, I was never the biggest guy, but I was always trying to find different ways to, to work with my strengths. But I was definitely was never the biggest guy on the stage for sure. Yeah, yeah, it's tough. Yeah, you know, yeah. it's tough standing next to somebody fifty pounds heavier than you and looking, you know, looking equally impressive. Right. I had a technique, though. I'll tell you what it is. What's that? It's, I always tried to stand about two inches in front of them. <laughs> I would glance down as to where the toes were, <laughs> and I'd get about two inches ahead of that. Yeah, and, yeah, that's, and, that's and, and, and nowadays, they all do it. If one steps forward, the other one steps forward, and they got to literally remind them five times to go back on the line because they end up right uh -huh. in front of, I mean, close. I mean, if they would do two more inches, they would fall off stage. That's what they do today. Yeah, well, that's the problem. They what figured I, it out now because everybody was doing it. Yeah. What I used to do is uh, when I hit a front double bicep, my front, my left foot would step up and my right foot would step up while I'm doing a pose. So they're not paying attention to my feet. So they're looking at me doing this pose, but I'm actually, I stepped up twice <laughs> when I hit my shot. <laughs> Yeah. Did that to yeah. all of you. All of you. <laughs> yeah. Then you go to the side chest, you move one inch. Then you turn to the back, you move another inch. Yeah. You know, yeah. Like, yeah. Well, I, I didn't know that Frank was pioneer of out angling. Yeah. <laughs> pioneer of what? Out angling. That's, well, they, that's call, they call it that now, Frank. Out they call name. So <laughs> you come in front. You know, this is uh, uh, now everybody's doing it. They got terms and names for everything these days. House angling? Out angling. Yeah. Out angling. That sounds like a fisherman. <laughs> <laughs> Probably in my bad English. Man who fishes from his front porch. <laughs> yeah. You you out you uh, Mino is trying to say you out angling this guy's on stage by oh, out angling. Front. Yeah. <laughs> Translate for me, days, please. <laughs> But, uh, oh, okay, so now, another thing. What do you think when you think of Frank Zane on the stage? Okay, this is now news. He had a trick to come a little bit in front so he would maybe look bigger, so he would match those guys with the size. But Frank was known for being a statue. Every separation, legs, quadriceps, you can see medialis, satellis, everything. Yeah, and, and that's why I think he didn't even have to step forward that much because he was so detailed that he creates so much of an illusion that he always looked bigger than he probably was anyways. The point I always tried to get across was I didn't, I'd, I, I'd hold each post for long enough for everybody to see it. I wouldn't be flicking from one post to the next. One guy that did that was uh, Makaway, Muhammad Makaway. When he posed, it was like yeah, one, one pose, and then a second later was another pose. You really can't see anything when you're going that fast. Mm. So I made sure I wanted to get everybody a good look, and I held the shot for, you know, a good count of maybe 10 before I went to the pose. Hey, Frank, when you were on the side waiting to be called again or waiting for the call out, were you one of those who believed in standing as a statue? In, uh, in, the, as, li in the lineup, uh, you mean? In the lineup, yeah. Well, I always tried to keep my abs tense and my thighs, my quads tensed. The whole time. That was that was what I always tried to do. Yeah. And did you feel that you might have been judged at that time? Like you want to be having like a certain stature about your physique at that I time? I think yeah. I think people, the judges, observe you. Right. You know, you don't want to just you know get totally relaxed when you're standing not in the lineup. Now guys are leaning, bending down, and. Uh, totally relaxed a lot of time. But I think that judges should speak about that and have guys standing as firm as possible throughout the, the duration on, on the stage because you're still up there on the stage the whole time. Yeah, you should do it. Frank, it's a workout. It's like a marathon, you know, you're on right. stage. But that comes again with practice and posing because if you don't practice exactly. posing, you're going to end up on stage being tired and exhausted and fading and condition is going to shits. Frank, do you have a lot of athletes still to this day reach out to you and ask you for advice? No, not really. A few. Uh, I mean, I, I have one, one friend of mine who is my training partner, Jesse Fernandez, who competes, and he comes over three times a week. We work out together. Mike O'Hearn shows up every now and then. Mm. I work with them, but I really don't have a lot. Oh. What, what, uh, 
Like what stories, do you have any old stories that you might want to share with us? Like, I love the one with Arnold. I'm just like, I, I was that type of guy. Like I wanted to know all the little detailed stuff and uh, just being a student of the sport. Well, I remember one time we went to Tijuana, Mexico for uh, Mr. International, me and Arnold, and we're driving back in this Volkswagen. And uh, I said, Ar Arnold, did you check your gas gauge, see how much gas you have? And he says, don't worry, this car runs like a tank. We, it doesn't run out of gas. And then five minutes later, he, we, it was out of gas. <laughs> <laughs> don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> What, uh, yeah, because I used to drive, I mean, I'm telling you now, I, I used to drive by your house as many times as possible just to see if I would get a, get, see if you would be, I don't know what I was thinking. Like, you're not going to be standing. just want to get a glimpse of Frank. Yeah, you're not going to be standing by the gate or anything, but every time I drove by that area, uh, which was not far from Indian Indian uh, Indian Avenue, I'd, I'd stop over that area to see. I'd look, I never saw you come out there, but I, like I said, uh, before I see you in, a, in the park, in the um the post office. That was when I had the Cary Grant house. Yeah. Yeah, the big place. I just seen the big sign out there. I just kept looking to see. See, today there's a title. The see, today there's a title for people like you, Chris. <laughs> okay. <I was> yeah. <laughs> yeah, you'd be arrested. <laughs> <laughs> Every chance I got. Oh, go by the Zane, Zane Haven. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Uh, okay, but I, I have a bunch of questions also <laughs> about, <laughs> about uh, Arnold, right? Uh, Frank, you competed with him. Have you ever seen him do the side triceps pose? I don't recall. <laughs> For a reason, <laughs> he never did. I mean, <clears throat> why, why, why do you think he never did the side triceps pose, Milos? Uh, Arnold was master of uh, showing what he wanted to show, right? And uh, to hide the weaknesses. I mean, uh, this is it. Uh, I posted the um, 1980 Olympia. It's on my Instagram. When they call it side triceps and uh, Arnold is doing his thing, you know. Yeah, this. he never did the compulsories. Yeah, never. Yeah, it's a completely ignored. Yeah, Funny so story about that. There was a judge. I forget the guy's name. Uh, Dennis something. But anyway, he was a judge at that contest. And uh, Arnold was doing, it was a prejudging, and Arnold was doing not the compulsory poses. He was doing whatever he wanted. And the judge said to him, he warned him several times. And then he said to Arnold, he says, Arnold, get off the stage. You're disqualified. Nobody listened. That night they sent that judge home. Uh. <laughs> he was through, but Arnold prevailed, and he ended up winning. Wow. Yeah. It's, it's good awesome. to be king, huh? Yeah, I guess. Yeah. Yeah, but but Frank, okay, I asked uh, Dennis and, uh, and Chris before uh, for favorite exercise. If you can choose and give advice for people, just one exercise for each muscle group. What would be for chest? What would be your choice for back? What would be for for quads? You know, just one. Like, uh, well, I'd say for quads, leg extension. For chest, I'd have to say uh, incline dumbbell press on a on a thirty degree incline. For back, I'd have to say leverage row, like a T bar row. For biceps, maybe alternate dumbbell curl. For triceps, maybe uh, uh, reverse dips for triceps. You know, I mean, it's a matter of how, what you have to do them on, and you know how how good you feel when you're doing it. So it's going to vary for people with different bone structures, but those are the ones that I do. Shoulders? For shoulders? No. What would you do for delts? What? For delts. Delt for deltoids would have to be uh, maybe one, one arm side cable raise for lateral deltoids with my, end of my, my hand turned up like this. To get a little bit of rear deltoid in the movement. Did you? Um, uh, so that was your favorite. Did you have like? Did you ever do giant sets or anything like that? I did a lot of super setting. Setting. Yeah, you know, giant set be maybe more than three exercises. I really didn't do too much of that. And did did 
Did Joe Weider have anything to, did he ever give you any tips or anything that you, you implemented in your, in your program from Joe? Yeah. His main advice to me was, Oh, Frank, always speak good about me, eh? <laughs> always say positive things about me, eh? <laughs> hey. That Canadian, eh? <laughs> That's the advice I got. Uh, <laughs> it was good advice, you know, that was good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, he always wanted to know if you had legs. <laughs> did, did you, um, when, how was that when you first posed for Joe? Like, where were you and how, how what was that, that uh, feeling you had that he was, he was the master blaster? Yeah, I don't even know. I might have been on uh, Santa Monica Beach with Dave Draper, me and Arnold, Artie Zeller taking photos. But, uh, you know, there were a lot of, we had a lot of sessions like that. Right. Yeah, I, I had a few myself, and it was it was just awesome for me because, like, it's like uh, you know, like many of us, we looked up to Joe and being at the the real godfather of the sport. And uh, but I always thought he, I, I took a lot from some of our posing sessions and what he was asking me to do and what I was seeing. He was very good for that, you know, having them him there when you were posing. He tell you all these little things, yeah. like for example, one of my favorites is. Walk the back leg, eh? And you're standing and one leg's behind the other. You want to lock the back leg. Uh -huh. Things like that. But, yeah. you know, he was very colorful. And I think uh, I think the sport missed I mean, I miss him. I, it it oh, yeah. was a lot more fun when he was around. Yeah, because, you know, after you, after we did a, um, a competition, we go and do the uh, the famous shots with the gardeners. And I, I was able to shoot with him with that same boxed camera. Mm -hmm. That they were spinning like that, and then they take the shot, and then having Joe on the side, you know, putting his two cents in the shots or how much oil you have. He used to love, he loved the oil, uh, Joe. He, he liked like, oiling up the guy. Put some more oil on. <laughs> put some more in your abs, your abs. <laughs> I was yeah. saying. You'd be dripping, and that was still on Yeah. <laughs> well, I guess. That's, I miss that. Uh, myself, man, just like having Joe backstage waiting for you to to do your shots and uh, and you know being a weeder athlete at the time was it was amazing. Yeah, for for me, just the collection and and Joe actually mentioned uh, Frank at that time. I was at Robert Threep Studio. I was doing this photo shoot, black and white, and uh, Joe was there. And I was supposed to do it front relax, and I would always be just straight. How we do it, right? And, and I, I can't imitate Joe exactly, but no, do the Frank Zane. I said, what do you mean? <laughs> he would, he would uh, move my hips, right? So I'm uh, not straight. It's like, uh, uh, you know, you move the hips like a little bit. So it's not like symmetrical. It's off. And I said, okay, lift this shoulder. I said, no, 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 lift the other shoulder, right? And that, that's one of my favorite shots. I mean, first time I ever did it, it was Joe playing with it. He's just okay, do this, move the hip, lift the arm, pull the lat out. Uh, he He was underappreciated a little bit maybe we were making jokes but he had that scanning vision he knew exactly what he wanted you know when you never hit the pose you don't know that you look good in this pose right you're not comfortable with the pose but then joe position you and then you look at the picture it looks like you did this all your life yeah he was good at that but yeah. guys, I got to go because I hear my wife calling me okay all right. frank frank listen we appreciate you lot, making the time Thank, Thank you, you so much, and um, I'm uh, I'm looking forward to for the, to, this, gonna, to this gonna, uh, to this to air on Sunday. I'm gonna right. hit you on I'm gonna hit you on the DM yeah. and, and see if I can get the, get in touch with you. Okay, on Instagram. Okay, uh, send me a link to this so I can see it when it airs. Okay. Oh well, we will email sure. it to you. Thank you so much. Okay. Thanks a lot, guys. Thanks All for right. coming on. Okay. Bye bye. You diet down, train hard and supplement smart for months. When the time comes to step on stage, don't leave your tan to chance. Go with the pros. Pro Tan. Number one worldwide since 1987 and the official sponsor of the Olympia for the last 15 years. Don't step on stage without it. Pro Tan. 
<laughs> had a 15 more questions. But yeah, yeah. I, <laughs> I'm glad. I'm glad you didn't ask all. It 15 was a of strong them. hour, man. That was yeah, good. Yeah, yeah, that was good. Listen, let's get back to to Pittsburgh real quick. We're not done with Pittsburgh yet. So, <laughs> okay. So, hey, I I I was impressed with Samson, his size. Standing next to Rami, I was really, really impressed. Yeah, because you know Rami. Yeah, because yeah, I know Rami. But I also know that Rami is not training. You know, he hasn't been training. He's off. And, and you know, it, it, this is his smallest, you know. But Samson looked unbelievable. But when I look at, 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 uh, at Derek, you know, if, and like you said earlier, if this was judged on Saturday, Derek would be Mr. Olympia. And I think that, Except I really I'm, think we're looking at the new Mr. Olympia and Derek this year. I really believe that he's gonna he's gonna put it all together for the Olympia and he's gonna beat Hardy. I think I I think Derek is the next Mr. Olympia, and I think I think at one point you're gonna be looking at Nick Walker winning it also. But I think that's gonna happen Derek first, and I think uh I think when it comes, I think when it comes to size, that Samson next to Nick, I, I don't know if you can even compare them. When it comes to, I mean, Samson has the size; he's definitely not smaller than Nick, and he, you know, and he has the symmetry. So, as long as Samson is on, I think Samson can be as high as second. As first, they're all gonna be up in. Yeah, we're going there. I mean, listen. Okay. For, for me, I'm going to tell you this. Nobody's going to touch uh, Hani's conditioning from the front. Hadi. Hadi, Hadi, yeah. Nobody's that. yeah. Hadi has that crazy super strider chest, intercostal serratus, abs, uh, legs. I mean, it just leaves that impression like, Jesus Christ. Then he turns to the side, right? And, you know, we know this thing. I mean, it's like, shh. Yeah. Derek exposed him from the back. I mean, as good as Hardy was, Derek was clearly winning those shots. Mm -hmm. uh, there's yeah. a two shots, right? But we have uh, eight mandatories. So let's analyze. I mean, you guys are experts and analysts. When uh, Derek came and pulled out the front relaxed pose, I was shocked. Mm -hmm. That's going to be super hard to beat. So No, there's nobody going to beat it. It's simple. Yeah, I mean, Chris was master of this. I was uh, sitting next to Chris in the front. He likes showing my abs because I think uh, it showed a little bit more for me if I have abs and quads here. Yeah, even if I don't <laughs> but Chris, Chris was open up and yeah. looked that crazy. Yeah, Derek has the biggest differ differential in the shoulder waist. Yeah, yeah, it's a, super crazy. I mean, he looks bigger. But this is, but this is this. You're talking about Derek. Um, he hasn't. He's he's building his IQ in the gym, and 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 not only that, oh, he's also oh, he's still young. He's in his twenties. Yeah, he's he's young. only going to get better. That's what I'm saying. And yeah. he hasn't even hit his peak nah. ever. And since the USA, he's never hit his peak to me. Mm -hmm. That's the USA. I think he peaked at the USA, and I think he's been chasing some type of look ever since. But I think it's all coming together, in my opinion. And like I said. The most important for myself is not about. I'm mean, not a. It's, it's not a a big uh, hoax. How to diet? You know, you lose weight. You you you. I mean, you drop your cards. You. It's not like a science science rock. You know, to. Uh, uh, it's not like rocket science. But if you can raise your IQ in the gym, that's when you start to bodybuild. And I think he's putting together all the little tools he needs and feedback he's been getting, you know, same with Nick, uh, same with uh, Samson. These three guys, these three horses right here are going to be going like this throughout these next uh, few years, four to five years, I would think. Yeah, but uh, Hadi is going nowhere. Hadi is uh, one of those hardest working guys, right? He's motivated. He's Iranian. I mean, I mean, Jay, I mean, we cannot, uh, for me, uh, Hadi should have won three Olympias by now, you know, if I was judge. And, uh, you know, I, I sound like I love his shape symmetry so much that he's the best bodybuilder. But even me, shapely guy, I, I'm looking, uh, 
all the mandatories he was looking so impressive. Even when back in the day, Dennis was saying after uh, Rami won first Olympia, Dennis was saying, if you remember, Paddy is the biggest problem. Mm-hmm. The way he was yeah. saying, it. yeah, yeah. So you saw it. Yeah. Do, you, do you agree? Do you agree, guys, both of you, that, you know, all the bodybuilders, myself, you, uh, you both of you guys, there was a certain period where you were just on your game and it was, it was the board beforehand and it was that sweet spot period. And then it was the aftermath of that. But do you think, <laughs> do you, yeah, everyone has that in their career. Do you think uh, Hadi is going to experience this? Cause we saw him grain bone, dry, dry, dry. And then when he actually won it, he wasn't even at that look. Mm-hmm. We'll see. But, we'll, we'll have to see this year. Do you think that happens, though? Do you agree with that? It can. It can. But I don't know if it happens. You know, we'll see this year. I, mean, I expect him this year to be at his all-time best. I mean, yeah. he he needs, he needs knows. I mean, and he, and he, even if he doesn't hear it, Hani hears it. You know, yeah. he knows that in order for him to repeat, he needs to be back to where he I mean, was the year before. I, I think just watching that video from Iran is enough Go go juice to make you I'm want just, to. <laughs> but I but I really think that Derek has everything. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And I'm a huge fan of Derek. Huge, huge, huge. And uh, you know, people are gonna say biased. You know, he, he goes next to Samson and go mano a mano. One by uh, their poses, I would clearly give it to Derek. You know. So even me being a biased coach, but when you analyze, good thing for Derek is. Show starts with the front relax, right? So he's devastating in that one. First pose from the biceps, that's oh shit. You know, so he back can back double though, um, brother. That back uh, double is different. Yeah. So last spread is so so. So it's good, but there's many guys that can beat him in the last spread. Side chest. There, was many, can, there were many guys that beat Phil Heath in the last spread. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's true. But I'm yeah. talking overall. He yeah, is, but but he is think, the, I, think I, I wish we have a, a Steve here, big Steve, mm-hmm. you know, so for all of us to learn a little bit more. Because I put myself in a position. So now what? I have to judge side chest, okay? Let's uh, well, if Derek is not first or second, uh, yeah, where do I put him in that pose? Mm-hmm. Okay, then uh, uh, turn to the back, back down biceps. I, I think Derek is unbeatable. I mean, uh, as whatever. And lean as hell. His mm-hmm. body fat behind from the back is because he's young. He's yeah. young. You know how yeah, you, you he, get. You but get he can away. also. But if you can get that mature, I, look, I, I also. Get, I know. That's gonna be a whole other whole other category for you. I know. But, but I, when you're in your twenties, you you eat whatever you want, and you still lean. Yeah. But, but here, Derek wins. Uh, front double biceps, back double biceps, back lat spread, and front relax. Not abs. Not anything else besides these four. Tell me any other pose besides these four. Well, he, he, he wins against who? Oh, uh, uh, Mr. Olympia lineup. I know, but you can, you got to co- compare him to a single person okay. because okay. you can't say he's okay because uh, he might beat uh, other guys in other poses too. Yeah, yeah, I know. But, who, but you, he, who are you comparing him to right now? I was uh, with the champ. With the champ. Uh, okay. Because, okay. Front of biceps. Hard is good. Hard is complete. And Jay Cutler, he uh, said it like boxing. But I mean, but he can be beat in the front double. Who? Adi can be beat in the front double. Yeah. yeah. I, I, yeah Derek, Derek beats him in the front double. Yeah. That's what I said. Derek can be. So say, so who do I compare him with? Uh, how, did, how did Chupan wins lot spread from the front? Way too much detail. You know, shit is going on. I mean, uh, yeah. The side chest, uh, how he beats him. Side chest, how he beats him. Abshad honey beats him. Most mascara honey. We don't beats know him. that yet. Oh, we know. We know. <laughs> we know. That. We don't know <laughs> that yet. Give okay, him but, another uh, six months. You give him. You, you, we, you're judging uh, too but, early. You and let's say it, Milos. Milos. Yeah, but Milos, you're judging too early. I think. Let's say it, I, I, you, I think. I, I think you're judging by what he looked like last year. We have here's to. We thing. have to judge them what they look like this year. Here's the thing. What I noticed here. about. Here's the thing. What I noticed about Derek, uh, Dennis, and Milos. Hmm? I've seen striations in his quads before. Have you? Say again. I've seen striations in Derek's quads. Before. Yeah. I've yeah. seen him in his chest. I've seen him in his chest before. Mm-hmm. 
Where? Where did you see it? Under which light? Well, just on his IG. The moonlight? I don't know. Boys, it's boys it's pretty it. hard but to see it, it. But when it came to the show, they weren't there this year. Yeah. They were not there last year either. Maybe they he wasn't there. Maybe so he, that means listen, maybe there's he, a level, maybe he, there's a level in which he can be there and he can bring that. Okay, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, if he, that's, if, when he brings that, he's going to be... Yeah, yeah. That's ex I, I that's exactly how I feel. Let him come in at his best. I, I told Derek in the personal right after Olympia, right next to Samson, I was saying, talking to him, uh, my advice. Yeah, he needs to bring this and deep controlled abs, right? A little bit more detail here as well. But as much detail as he could bring, you cannot stand next to Hadi Chupan. You don't parts. have to be the hardest guy on stage to win the Olympia. And we already no, saw no, no. that how many times? I was never yeah. the hardest guy. <laughs> I was I talking about to, pose I by pose. Huh? I was talking about pose by pose. So in which pose you can see it? I mean, we can predict it. We've seen a I, million times. I, 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 I get it. There's poses where Hadi is winning. Yeah, he was way. the hardest guy when he took third a few times, Hadi. Right? That's what I'm saying. He was so the hardest guy. I, we're not going to judge. Gonna we're not going to judge who has the most striations. We're going to know. judge who has the best overall package, and that's okay. what I'm referring here, to. Here comes the Samsung. Yeah, okay. but here no. comes the Samsung overall package. Overall, yeah, but when you compare, when I compare Samson and and Derek, uh -huh. okay, especially in the front, let's say in the front double biceps, uh -huh. there's levels at this point. Okay, now Samson's oh, side oh, chest, oh, oh. Samson's side chest is ridiculous. He looks, he looks bigger than fucking hell on the side chest. Now, is that going to be enough? Yeah. That's what I'm saying. Because when it, what do we always say? Shows are one from? The back. Okay, so now Samson is close. He's, he's right there. Don't get me wrong, Milos. Yeah. That's why I say he, I see him as yeah. high as second. But when it comes to it, we have to judge the back. Yeah, that's it. And the thing is, the thing is with Derek, his torso is more superior than anybody in yeah. the sport right now. And the, even though he's so much lighter than these guys, I said that, I said that he's lighter, lighter than these guys. The proportions he looked, of the pecs, the abs, yeah, and the way it's set up, Chris, is Chris, Chris, perfect. Even though he's lighter than these guys, he's fifty pounds lighter than or six. Seven, wait, wait, how much was Samson? Two twelve guys are top two last. He year. was how much? 296. Why is he stepping on scale at 320 or something? Uh, no, no, no. That's for a uh, for, uh, for, uh, guest posing. Instagram. That's yeah. what I'm talking about. I'm talking about uh, the Derek? guest posing. Yeah, he was, yeah, 320. <coughs> so. 320. Gar I mean, Derek was probably 260. Maybe. Yeah. So we're talking 60 pounds less. He didn't look 60 pounds smaller than any of these guys. No. Nope. That's, I mean, this, that's what I'm saying. That's where the proportions come into play. Hey, that's what I'm saying. And that's why I, I believe... I, I was the most impressed with Derek. I was super impressed with, with, with Samson. And uh, I was... Uh, yeah, those are the guys that impressed me the most. And where I, that's why I said, oh, fuck, this is, this is a battle for the Olympia right there. Yeah, it's going to be a lot of guys... Nick, that Nick I, I think Nick... I was impressed with Nick, but I just believe that Nick needs help from these guys to be off in order to win the Olympia. I don't think that, I, I, I don't know. Because Nick, Nick proves me wrong every fucking year. Yeah, uh, the hard work, the hard work. I know. But when you have to, when if Derek is on and Nick is on, we've seen Derek on every fucking year. I think everybody's going to be on. Yeah. I've got a funny Nick feeling. To... Everybody's going to be on. Nick needs a little bit of help. Yeah. Nick needs to out freak the, everybody. Everybody uh, wants him to be a freak, and he is so good conditioned anyway. Did you see Milos? Did, I'm sorry. Did you see the pictures that this one guy posted from Nick last year and this year? No. It was no. like it was like. Uh, yeah, it's a lot harder. He was a lot drier. He was a little bit harder, but the freak, the freak factor from last year. His arms were twice the size. It looked like they were twice the size as uh, compared to this year. So he was bigger before. He looked better to me this year for sure. He was way bigger before, last year. I know that's what I'm saying. I'm just going off of videos and pictures, so I don't go off. I, know, I wasn't but there. When you the only ticket to win is out freak, out condition, right? Well, just being being there, he was better. Yeah. But he knows that the just condition is not enough, right? 
So you have to bring that uh, little extra. And what is his calling? I tell him this every time. Yeah, he has to be a freak. Yeah, he needs to be a freak. Yeah, but, but uh, you know, I'm going to tell you both, because uh, you won, of course, much more shows than I did. Uh, if you think I talked to Samson, and I had that mentality mindset back in the day. I competed with Flex and Sean and Kevin and Chris. and yeah, I never was having that winner's mentality, I'm going to go there and win, right? Mm, mm. So if I really go, okay, well, we are happy with the top three and you have that mindset. No, uh, I'm telling Samson, and Samson is confident enough. I mean, he's not cocky and, you know, he's humble champion, but he knows he has his shot of winning. So even me discussing right here, oh, yeah, he lose this shot. Lose. Yeah, we're going to lose some shots to you know, a bunch of guys. But as the overall package, I still think, just like you, Chris, for me, you are ideal. You have a combination of everything. I'm so going to go to the bathroom, y'all. Yeah, go, you know. Hey, to, hey, get out of here. I got to go. <laughs> no. Go, on, man. Go on, get. Go on, get. Yeah, but Chris, I mean, uh, uh, again, do you think that you could beat Ronnie even close to his best at your best? Uh, it would have took something else. It would have took my training to be different. If I was if I was training differently, I would have had a better, a different physique. And that's where uh, no one gives that any any type of uh, I don't know. No one, no one looks at that when they when they think about how good could I could have been, how could I, you know, could have been. It was like. Jim Mannion and Dorian was like, oh, come train with me. For, come stay here for three months in England with me and just totally focus on yourself. That right there, I think I could have beat everybody. I think when I was coming back, when I was about to go train with Dorian, I was 295. I had abs already. I had, I'm had. i looking at 12 weeks till the show. That's when the most tragic uh, thing happened to me and coming down with an infection and becoming hospitalized and in a coma. That's where I know I was going to be my absolute best, and because I was I was on the East Coast, just waiting to go to Dorian's house to uh, to finish out my prep with him, and just being that focused, I think I, I would have beat everybody. So, and I would have beat I would have beat Ronnie in two thousand, and I ended up having that uh, that seizure, and I thought you know maybe something's wrong with me. I better not do the show, and I'm sitting in the audience ripped, man. I'm telling you. I was better than 99 and 2000. And I then apologize, I was, guys, but I had to go. You know, I thought I was going to be able to hold it until I say bye to y'all, but ah. Uh, yeah, yeah. uh, It'll be coming down my, your leg. My prostate said otherwise. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Dennis, I was asking Chris if he thinks that uh, at his best when he was, if he was just like still a little sharper, if he could have beat Ronnie at his best. I mean, because if you just analyze well, shape... Well, listen, if we would look at what we talked about the whole time, then yes. Yeah, I mean... But at that time, at that point... You know, you're judging. Are you judging, like, yeah. for prototypically... I say, I say this, right? though. Chris in 99 would win the last five Olympias. Last 10. That was a good... That's, yeah. Think about that. That's shit. That's something. <laughs> you win, you would win the Olympia. You yeah, that just, was that we, was something. That was, we were all was we were all in the wrong fucking time. Everything was so perfect getting ready for that show. It was perfect for me. I listen. It, it does. Wasn't tired. Nothing. Probably even in another year. Probably even at the honor, whatever. But now I think today you would be in that lineup. I think you would win the Olympia. That'd be something, brother. I wish I could have been. It's too late, Chris. <laughs> no. you had to I was telling him when you was off the air that when I was gonna go train with Dorian, finally, like I would have, I would have changed my training up, and you know. Why didn't you do it though? Why didn't you? Oh, I was on, when I was on my way. Okay, and just like a lot of these bodybuilders today, they're comfortable with where they're at. Oh, I'm, I'm here. You know, I got my, got my system down. Blah, blah, blah. I was never really, I was never going to San Diego because I didn't want to come out of my, my, my little system I had. And when I was, when I messed around with Dorian um, in Qatar, that's when he was starting to say, no, there's something wrong going on with your, your training. 
And I was like, you know, I didn't believe him, but looking back, he was a hundred percent right. I'm just swinging the weight around, swinging the weight around, never just momentumly swinging. Charles never said a damn thing about my training, but then I started to think, oh man, you know, I started to talk to Dorian more. I was talking to Jim Manion more. They were like telling me go and just focus on yourself, get away from everybody and just focus on Chris. And then I was like, you know what? I think I'm, I need to do it. And then I went, I'm on the East Coast, I'm waiting to go. Dorian's getting my, my living situation sorted. Next day, you know, I'm in the hospital. And like mm. I was telling you, 295, I had abs, I'm 12 weeks out. And I know for a fact, that was an unbeatable combination. And then to put that higher intensity training and knowing what the hell intensity is all about is what I learned, but it was too late. And that's what I see a lot of these guys doing, waiting, waiting. Like you have right now, you don't have tomorrow. And I've, I learned that the hard way, uh, ended up in the hospital and in a coma. Hmm. You don't have tomorrow, you have right now. Yeah, you gotta do I, I, right I feel now. you, I feel you. It takes you to leave your comfort zone yeah. and go get really uncomfortable, then it takes that, it takes that. Yeah. For a certain period of time in your life, that you have a shot, a shot to beat this guy, and it's gone. Yeah, yeah. that's it. Hey, uh, getting that's back it. to uh, Frank Zan, I mean, uh, now that I find out he was fifty grams of carbs throughout his life, I probably had a more carbs in a week than he had in <laughs> a year. You know, <laughs> Jesus Christ, <laughs> ten pounds, ten pounds off your contest uh, weight. Uh, that's yeah, he was, he had he had to be dieting. He was dieting all year. Holy shit! Man. Hey, I was wondering. I was like, wait, did he sit down or did? I was like, I was going like to dentist. I was going like, uh, <laughs> 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 he's like, he's like, all right, I'm t- I'm done with this. I got shit. I got to take a little nap real quick. <laughs> <laughs> How about at the beginning? I knew, I knew I had excuse him. I was like, oh, that's right. all good, man. Shit. Yeah. I'm, you know what I'm going to do? Because I'm, I'm, I'm flying out to New York tonight. Huh? I'm taking oh. a, I'm taking a red off. You're not going, Milos, huh? Oh, no, no. No chance. No chance. Is your no. guys competing? Yeah, yeah. I was just talking today. He's, he's going to 12, yeah. Yeah. That's so um, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to ask Steve. I'm a, I'll probably see him tomorrow or Thursday. I'm going to ask him to come on next week, Tuesday. Yeah, that would be the best. Yeah, I'm going to ask him to come on. I'm sure he will. I'm sure he will. I and mean, he can educate also all of us. I mean, we've been in a game, but we've been looking through different eyes, right? Yeah. He he can explain the differences and what is considered. And he will. He We can ask questions. He will answer the questions. He's not one of them that's shying away from questions. He's the honest guy with that yeah. shit. Yeah, exactly. And I, and I think this is something that, you know, some of the athletes need to hear probably. You know, yeah. what is he yeah, looking I, for? What is he not looking for? Right. I, you know? boy, I see him at the airport and then I was just, okay, uh, I got to ask you like a few names and, and years. Lee Haney, 91, Dorian, 93. Instantly, Dorian. <laughs> so it's like, oh shit. Oh, yeah, and, uh, you know, he didn't look human. You know how. You know, Steve's face. <laughs> like I never forget that. You know, that year he didn't look human. Like, oh shit. You know? Uh but do you, how about how about a, you would have got Lee Haney a couple more years in? I don't think he even hit his peak yet. At being you know, 32 or so and finished his yeah, career. Tiring on that one. You know, for me, of course, Dorian clearly won no uh Lee clearly won ninety one. And now that he had a competition to, you know, step up the game, he would probably step up the game. But you know what, though? Then again, you know, you have your Robbie Robinsons who lifetime in it. Uh, but then you have your Gasparis, who was top two in the world at 22 years old. And you have your uh, Sean Rays and everything. They're very young and able to be at the top echelon of the sport. Put Sean Ray on the stage today. Man, and see, he was at his he best. Was, he was, he was, he was hard to beat, brother. Put Sean Ray on the stage today at his best. He would smoke some fools, man. Seriously, people may not think so because they talk a lot. No, no, no. And, I, that's not. It's yeah, not about he, he what would, it he says. Smoked, he would smoked a lot of people for sure. Would he win the Olympia? Possibly. I would. I would. I would give it to him. I mean, really, this kind of conditioning shape. 
presentation. I mean, it's hard to take uh, eyes off of him, right? Yeah. And there's so much detail and uh, there is shape. There is enough muscle mass for that frame. You know, uh, quality is equal front, side, back. It's you know, up and down. You know, like uh, we talk about Derek. Derek is one person from the back and uh, his twin brother from the front. Right, right, right. <laughs> You know, and, uh, you know, so some people, you know, had that. I mean, uh, Chris, you were never super strided, but you were always so good so that you but don't... The you, it's the combination was, of everything. I was in, a, I, in the quads, my legs were strided from top to bottom. Yeah. My uh, chest, you know, abs are definitely in, and, uh, you know, last spread, you know, good last spread. I was I didn't go for that extra trying to get my glutes as strided as. Uh, Chris, ever. listen, Chris, I'm gonna be honest. I never tried I'm gonna, that. I'm gonna be honest with you now. I don't <laughs> buy that bullshit. I'm telling you. I'm, no, I, I don't buy that bullshit. You Whoa. mean to tell okay, me? Listen. Chris, okay, hold on, hold on. Let me finish. Let me finish. You mean to tell me that you didn't go for striated glutes? You didn't want no striated. I never glutes. did one. I never did. I did one. No carb day in my whole life, and I never did it again. I know I you could. I never went I past. Think, I think you I never went past one carb, one cup of rice. It's been the lowest I've ever been in my whole life. And but listen, when I went to Meta Harness, Holland, and you I never, was, you never once told yourself, man, I wish I would have striated glutes. I did a couple times. A couple, <laughs> a couple times. When? But listen, when? But listen, when? 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 Ninety nine. That's a life. Ninety nine was yeah, but that was in the goon light in the morning after you woke but up. Listen, listen, I was in a hotel where, where, uh, where you guys were when you're in Holland, um, uh, Milos. Yeah, the the what's her name's uh, hotel, the Dorian's. Where Momo actually. died. Which one? Where Momo died. Oh, the Harness. <laughs> Harness. Yeah, the Harness. Harness. I yeah. slept in that hotel by myself. And I was scared the fucking shitless that Momo was gonna come and fucking talk to me that night. Oh really? And well, I was on the I was on the tour with Menzer. I with, I, I, with I, Menzer. I, I was on a tour with with, with 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 I mean, he was the most ripped guy that we ever seen at that time. He didn't have a structure to beat uh to beat a lot of people, but he was more ripped. And then he wasn't there the next year. So why am I trying to go down yeah, the path? Yeah, but Chris, that's, yeah, I'm I, just I, telling you. You, you I, don't believe, but I'm just telling you. I hear what you're saying, but I, I was, I, I was, I, not, I just I was like, that is I, not the way to go. I, I hear you. I hear you. But this, this certain athletes, they can have crazy striated body parts, and then there's just some body parts where they just don't have the striations. I have. I remember having a conversation with. It was going to take. It was going to take harder dieting to get there for me. I know, but do you? I, I, what I don't buy is not that. I I don't buy that you said I didn't want to do this to get. That this. wasn't my goal. Is what I was don't saying. you think that? This is just a question. Don't you? I I don't know how. How serious you were while you dieting for a show. Okay. How serious? Because I, because okay, okay, let, let me, life, okay, let I me. I put my life on the line a lot. All right, let me, let me explain this. Let me explain this. This is how I see it. I saw it as you are fucking perfectly gifted. You got away with so much stuff other people couldn't get away, and still get in contest shape and compete. Right. So where others would be fucking at home and fucking do cardio and and and, and just worry about their fucking show, you would still be out there having fun. Now, to what to what extent? I'm not what, that that I don't know. I'm that's just, what people don't know. That but that's people try to guesstimate, but no, they weren't there. But Chris, so how much I'm, fun do you think I, I'm having? I don't know. That's I'm why like, I'm saying. That's why I used I'm, to wrestle. I used to wrestle. I, I know what hard work is. You're not even letting me speak. Hard, so listen, I was a hard working son of a bitch. All right, now hold on. If, I don't want to mute you. I want you to listen. I'm not saying you partied every day. I don't know how many days you partied. Oh. <laughs> but what I'm here's what I want here's what I'm getting to. Don't you think that or did you ever if you would have been like some of these guys, I'm gonna take myself for instance. If you would have been like me, with your fucking genetics, I think you would have been fucking striated from top to bottom. I would have been a different look for sure. 
for sure. So that's why I'm saying I don't buy when you said I didn't want to do this to get there. I think you just maybe maybe not like I, I don't want to say I didn't want to do this. Okay, I'm, I'm, it's not like I don't want to do this, but I was. It was like, I mean, I'll, I'll stop Apple Jacks at five weeks out, and then <laughs> you know <laughs> some shit like that. <laughs> At five oh. weeks out, I would stop that shit. <laughs> five weeks. I would stop that shit five months out. Yeah, but listen, okay. So, who, so Chris, Chris, who was the one that had the Reese's peanut butter puffs? Shit, sure, probably dude. Flex was terrible on his <laughs> so, hey. Flex was terrible. I don't know what he'd be talking these days, but that wasn't the Flex I knew. <laughs> yeah, but Chris, you you would want us to uh, respect the fact that oh, you was. Still working hard, and you were, yeah, yeah, we all know that, but uh, you were not disciplined enough to go two days of low carbs. You did that one day and say, fuck that. And then, no, you know, no, I'm talking about no carbs. Yeah, no one carbs. Cup, that's one no cup carb. or it's, half a cup, that's the slowest I was but, able but to you, go. This is, I mean, Jay Cutler would tell you he was so fucking pissed off for 99 uh, Iron Man. He says, oh, I've seen uh, Chris eating a sandwich and all this shit. And, here he is, like suffering to get in this kind of shape. You could get away with it. Listen, I won't no. do any different. You were beating us easily. And you said in a, one of the previous podcasts, hey, I know I can beat these fools, you know, for whoever you're competing, even with that, partying, eating sandwich, and all this shit. I know, but you know, but Milos, you know, deep in the, deep in the back of his head, he's thinking, you know, shit, if I would have just gave me like one or two years to be, I would have been yeah. Mr. Olympia. But, you but would yeah. have a fucking Mr. Olympia in your fucking... You had a sand out in your house. Yeah. 99... That's all I'm saying. Hey, the rest of my case. Chris, uh, here it is. 99 Chris, Olympia, and Sean Ray at his best. Chris. Okay. So here, that's what I would say. Would the but Sean... Th this is not, but this is just because of the structure of Chris. Okay. okay. So, uh, but that's why... I, how do we look at the bodybuilding... We just said that Sean Ray could win Mr. Olympia. Right now, he was too perfect. Yeah. Everything, uh, crazy conditioning, mm -hmm. top bottom, right? But still, that conditioning and that shape and everything that he brings was not enough to beat this physique with this shape, with video V taper, quads, everything happening. That's Even my, my, my preference. Too. That's my so, preference. That, I'm not saying that he wouldn't beat him. But then there'll be a photo like this. And I yeah. won the shot clearly. Front and back, but I lost. Who's the, the guy? Who's the guy on the left? Jay Cutler, <laughs> Mister. He Cutler. already been second in the left. Jay Cutler. Yeah. Hey, Jay was not in the pose. <laughs> you pick. You pick okay. the pair. <laughs> okay. Look. <laughs> okay. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Yeah. I mean, Chris. Yeah, what? Chris. Yeah, what? Chris, you still bitter? Yeah, what? No, I just want the fuck what I came for, dog. So you, you, so you hold those pics in your phone? No, I just sent them because I looked at them the other day, uh, and I was uh, sending them. Accidentally found them. Yeah. In there. Hey, uh, for me, of course. Uh, yeah, but what? But I, I don't think, even know I, what judge gonna be like. I oh think, no! Oh I, yeah, just a second. I think. What if, you do that? I, I, oh. I think if you ask. Oh. You, yeah, if you ask Jay, wouldn't he tell you? Is it? Yeah, I think you, you know you have. Well, it. he told me that day, but the, he you're not gonna get the trophy up or the money up. No, of course not. Or or not gonna go to the audience and be like, hey man, no, Chris, come back <laughs> out here, get up off the floor, Chris, get up off the floor. And I'm telling you, I was on the goddamn floor, <laughs> down, right behind the curtain. <laughs> I wasn't far. <laughs> did you did you think prior to the finals that you got this? Yeah, I thought so. Yeah. I thought so. Yeah. I mean, I prepare you, uh, Chris, for Arnold Classic against Jay and, uh, you know, whichever, 2002 or three. I forgot now which was. But every time a judge says this to me, I want to say, hey, if you would have judged it right, I would have got what I, what I, what I deserve. Why, 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 does it why, better? why do you think it, it never happened? Something happened. Something's going on. But if you look at these photos, you're like, it's got to be a different force that wasn't going to allow that to happen. I don't know. But you can't look at the photos and and rejudge it and be like, okay, you lost that one again. Yeah. You just can't do it. I mean, uh, I, I'm I gonna, just because it popped up my computer when I was in and I was in 
uh, Pittsburgh is why I had him because I was sending him to someone. I was like, man, look at this shit. I was like, I still can't get over this shit, dude. <laughs> that shit still stings. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, like so, someone like yourself, Dennis, you know, I, I wasn't on top of my game going into that show when you beat me in Hungary. I wasn't. Of course I, not. Of course, I listen, I I'm the first one to admit, Chris, we don't even have to argue about this. <laughs> if you if you are uh, just, hey, I, I'll I'll step back. That's as simple as that. Yeah. But there's just a lot of guys today that beat other guys because they're not on. So your job is to be on. Yeah. And if yeah. you're not on, that means you didn't do your job. And I think because you know doing ten shows, eleven shows a year, it was easy for me to like some of those. I'm not gonna have my foot on the gas on all of these shows. And and but once. If I got pissed or anyone, if we any of us got pissed, we're going to bring something different the next time. Yeah, but you should have been pissed every fucking time. Yeah, I know. I wasn't. Yeah. I wasn't pissed. Yeah. You got me pissed that day. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> you got me pissed. I was hot. I was I, I mean, I walked by you with the bus. I'm like, look at I, this. Hey, Milos, I think... I I'm gonna kick his ass. Milos, I when think it's Australia. Milos, when I we think get to Australia. I hey, want to see him. Hey, I think from uh, from Hungary to Australia, he didn't eat no carbs. Oh, that was, <laughs> that was, that was the week. <laughs> I was I was ready. I was <laughs> pulling my ass off all the way to Australia. <laughs> yeah. Come yeah. out of the bathroom sweating. So what yeah. are you doing? Nothing. Yeah. <laughs> Any, anyways, listen. Uh, New York Pro. Uh, this this uh, the, the, the pro debut of Carlos Thomas is not happening. You guys see that? Right. Oh, I don't know. Yeah, he said. Right. I yeah. don't know what happened. What, what did he say happened? Chris. What? No, he just wasn't gonna be. I don't know. I I tell you what I think. I just, I just think, I, I just think I, he wasn't gonna look good enough. I, that's what I thought because I saw a picture of him posing. I think for Steve. And he I looked at. I was like, I don't know if that's if that's contest ready, you know. So I think I maybe think he didn't have. I think you know, a lot of guys. I don't think they really need to, but people like to rely on someone else to get them there, hmm. as far as a coach or a dietitian. But I, I think he but, said something you know, about I, health issues, though. Oh. I don't know about that. I, that's what I, I think he's, he mentioned. And Milo, he mentioned something. Did you, Milo, did you have anyone coaching you up, or were you just no, never. so many shits on yourself as far as, like, ups and downs and trial, trial and errors with yourself? No, no. But you didn't have it, right? I had it, yeah. I mean, of course. Uh, did you try to? to uh, but back then, there was no coaches anyway. I mean, of course... If I would look for a coach, I would I would ask uh, Frank Zane. I mean, he was my idol, and uh, conditioning was spot on. I mean, shit, I didn't even ask him how he did his water. You guys uh, made me feel guilty asking too many. You questions. ask him for diuretics, so. <laughs> yeah. Diuretic. No, <laughs> yeah. <I'm not> <laughs> <laughs> See, he said he never did the diuretics. Oh, he never said he never did them. He said he didn't do it for that particular show that you asked when you asked. He that's sounded like he it. didn't do him. Yeah. Oh. He sounded yeah. like him. I didn't even have a chance. Uh, another thing, you know, that he was. Well, he's going to watch this and he's going to, he's going to, you're going to ask him now <laughs> and I'll find yeah. out. So Frank's uh, nickname was Chemist. Like he was ahead of his no, time. No, but that, I think that was because he was a math teacher, a like chemist teacher. The math and chemistry is two different. Uh, I, I, I think either one. Let, let, let Milos me be like, oh, shit. <laughs> hold on, hold on, hold on. He had, I know he had two. Wait, let, let me find, let me look at it because I looked at it. Hold on. Yeah, but you look at the Wikipedia, goddamn. You know, I Wikipedia. know, but maybe, maybe he has some truth to it. Yeah. There's a second smallest waste, and they, they don't say how much. <laughs> okay. How much? You know, if you how much? How big were your quads ever, uh, Dennis? My Did quads, my quads were the biggest. Two thousand one. Thirty. Thirty. Thirty one. Thirty two. Jesus. Yeah. That in shape or out of shape? That was. Uh, uh, that's Jesus, a good question. Out of shape. Just at one time when they were the biggest. That was no. My biggest was th that year, two thousand one, when I did the Arnold. Because I was I was squatting heavy all the way to the end. Did they get uh, what? What was those poundages like? 
I did the photo shoot with Chris Lund the week before the Arnold, and I did seven, right. 765. Was it six? Yeah. Was it six seventy five or seven sixty five? Seven plates. Seven plates. Two reps. Uh, I, I tell you the first the first time I I noticed you and you walked in the goals. I said this before, but I was like, holy fuck! I was <laughs> like, like somebody else this, coming. I didn't say a word to you, but I saw you and I was like, this. you know what's funny about body? You remember? You, the, you remember what year that was? Me? No, you remember the year? I it probably. No, but you had hair. I thought you were Kevin at first. I had hair in 98. I had hair in 2001. I had hair. Must have been. 97. Must have been. You had a much better hair in 98 than 2000. Must have been between 98 when you <laughs> walked the <with> gold. <laughs> you had a tank top on walking around. I always, I, was, had, a, I always had a tank top on. Come on hey, now. Who the fuck is that guy? Like, shit. You were, but you were smaller, that smaller look. Yeah. Uh, in 98, right? 98, yeah. When I won the USA's. Yeah, I think that's when it was. I was I weigh in at two thirty two. Yeah, he was, bro. If you just slowly went up from there. I think it would have been a whole other story. Uh, Here, he was given the nickname the chemist due to his bachelor of science. Yeah, that's why. The chemist. But he's also a math teacher somewhere. It says here somewhere he was teaching yeah. math. Yeah, that is Anyways. question. I wanted to clarify, but you guys make me feel guilty that I talk too much, so I just have to hold who back. Who says you? Who, why, why are you blaming us? It's not us. <laughs> we don't comment on the videos. <laughs> hey, yeah. hey, just make, you just rolls your eyes, and that's it. You know? No, so, it's not. You're rolling eyes. Okay. Never, ne oh. never because hey. you talk too much. That's never why. When I roll my eyes, <laughs> when I roll my you eyes. You got to roll your eyes, he said. What, no, what, we just need <laughs> laughing. We laugh. We got a little laugh. It's, my, yeah. it's sometimes just when you come in with the questions with the questions that you come in. That's why I'm <laughs> you For me, you can never talk too much because you always he, have something good to say. And this makes me laugh because I watch his facial expressions. So it makes me laugh because <laughs> I'm like reading what he's thinking, yeah, you know? I can see you, Mila, and I, every Tuesday it's the same thing. When I, when I, whoever the guest is, I can see Mila's already, he's already, <laughs> he, he's ready to go. <laughs> So I say something, I say something, and then you can tell. Milos, he said, his lips start shaking first. <laughs> yeah. But you know how we jump in each other's words? Yeah. So it's like, okay, I'm waiting. What is that moment when you guys are going to be silent so I can start first? <laughs> and and Milos, I was going to tell you when, I know when we did that one in, in Canada, you beat me there. Yeah. But leading up to that, I was always like, man, this guy... I don't know, all the goddamn covers, dude. All the fucking covers. I'm like, oh shit. And then I, see, I was like, I see what's the pretty boy? Yeah. They're like, this yeah. fucking guy, man. And they're like, then he beat me there. And I'm like, oh shit, I gotta do something different for <laughs> next week. Cause I'm trying to get a win. I never got, I didn't even win a, a show at that time. And so I, I won the one next week, but man, I was going like hell. Like, I was just, oh my goodness. Yeah. yeah. I was going to hell to try to beat you at that, that night of champions. And that's, I finally got one, and I was just Chris, like, you going to New York? Yeah. No, I'm not going, man. I've, I've been out of the road, man. I'm trying to yeah, chill. Well, I, I, I tell you, Chris, and then, of course, I love your physique. I think there is similarities in our physiques. Of course, you had a much better back and arms, you know. You said, so you could you could beat me in many poses, but I, I know if you're a little bit, like the Danny says, if you're a little bit off, I could squeak in here and there, right? Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, in Canada... Yeah, I beat you, but uh, I'm going to tell you this. I had a photo shoot. I came back from Canada, like, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. God damn. <laughs> what did you want to though? And, and Wednesday was with Chris Land, heavy legs, which I was pissed off. I said, you know, you don't want to train uh, legs on Wednesday before starting the show. No, you don't. Uh, you know how back in the day, Chris, no, 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 no fake bullshit, you know. Yeah, but you still was good no matter what. You didn't, I didn't yeah. win every shot, that's for sure. Yeah, it was good. Actually, I'm going to pull out some picture from 97. <laughs> I know you got some good yeah. ones. Well, you're in between poses and I'm in a, in a pose. And then a... Milo's, got a, Milo's got enough pictures and videos to post five times. <laughs> hey, I'm going to show you one of my videos. I took some video at that time um, when I was at the Beacon walking to the... To the uh, to the theater and walking back. I got all that stuff on video and I have some in-between stuff uh, in the hotel. 
um, from that that year. I got to I got to show you my my collection one day, man. Wait, right. you probably have something that you never published. Publish it. Never, then, never published. Okay, so uh, safe trip through to New York. Yes, I Let see. You, I'll see you. I see you guys next week, and I'm see I'm talk to Steve and see if we can get Steve on next next Tuesday, so we can so we can throw some questions out. All right, guys. Thanks. Y'all be safe. God bless. Hey, we out. One, out. Later on, brother. All right.